How's it going, my friends? So, I'm uh, still watching many of my friends in the pro-Israel space on social media. And, um, you know, they're still continuing in this kind of, uh, I guess, strategy or, or, or endeavor, which in Hebrew is entitled Hasbara. What is really Hasbara? Hasbara means to explain. And what they're doing is they're trying to talk to people who don't like Jews or are not in favor of Israel. People who um, come and say, well, the Jewish people are um, occupying Palestine. You know, we're, we're occupiers, we're usurpers, we're, we're thieves, etc., etc. I even had a friend today ask me, Svi, I don't understand, like, you know, I'm talking to these people from... He's talking about Muslims, right? He's I'm talking to this lady from like I don't know Indonesia, right? Online on on, on uh, Instagram, and she keeps repeating the same you know the same old tired arguments. And and he, and he asked me, he's like he's like you know, so he, he's like people in most areas of life, these same people, right? They have common sense, you know. They 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 work, they pay their taxes, they do what they're supposed to do, whatever it is. Let's just assume they do, right? And common sense, you know, they, they lead their life with common sense. But when it comes to this one issue, you try to talk to them about history and logic and, and, and everything that happened and, you know, literally just like common sense, right? If somebody came to kill you, you know, what would you do? That kind of thing. You know, if somebody wanted to murder you and over and over and over again and like, you clearly could see that like, <laughs> you know, who, who's, so to speak, the bad guys here. And he goes, but when it comes to this one thing, they can't. They can't think th think straight. So, my friends, I just want to tell you today what I told my friend. What you need to understand is that all of your explanations and all of your appeals to logic and all of your appeals to common sense are going to fall on deaf ears for one simple reason. And some people would say, well, no, it's because they're anti-Semites and they hate Jews intrinsically and blah 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 that could be true that could be true if you're talking to let's say people in the west you know leftists or communists or whoever these kids on campus that could be true but that's not the main reason folks the main reason is very simple um, when it comes to the Torah and the Jewish people if you read the Torah, God told us, yes, He did tell us, if you, you know, here you have this land, I'm going to give you this land of Israel, but if you guys do the wrong things, you, don't, you guys do, you know, don't do what I want you to do, I'm going to, there are some punishments involved, I'm going to kick you out of the land, and um, you're going to be scattered throughout the world, you're going to be exiled, etc., etc., you're going to suffer, etc., etc., you're going to, be, listen, Guys, I'm sorry, read the Torah and you'll see all these, uh, it's called klalot, you know? There's brachot and there's klalot. Blessings and curses, right? But, with that said, these are, at the end of the day, we have an unconditional covenant with Hashem. Meaning, yes, there will be times where that will happen, but then our, our prophets told us that, and even Hashem told us that, at the end of the day, the land is forever ours, and we always have second chances. We can always get back into good graces. There will be a time when we're going to be brought back. Our, pro our prophet said that, and, the and we will come back, we'll, we'll build, build the cities, we'll you know, uh, plant vineyards, etc., etc. My friends, you have to understand something. In Islam, when you're talking to a Muslim, and it doesn't matter if it's a super religious Muslim, or moderately religious Muslim, or even a person who's like hardly, you know, maybe goes to mosque once a year or makes a, you know, the trip to the Saudi Arabia or whatever it is, right? They have it ingrained in Muslim society, however, however which way, that the Jew, the Jews at some point, yes, did have a covenant with God. And because of our misdeeds, because we killed uh, you know, our pro our prophets, supposedly, allegedly, one of the prophets is 
they say is JC, which he was not one of our prophets, I'm sorry to say, and other misdeeds that we did, that we forever lost the covenant. That's it. It's over. We lost our land. My friends, how do I know that th this is what they believe? You know, and way in the beginning of, <clears throat> of this conflict, of this whole situation, I remember posting a video of Russian-speaking IDF soldiers, you know, going to the battle, going to the battlefront. And a lot of people from, you know, places like Tajikistan and Uzbekistan and other places like that um, came to my page and in Russian wrote, they wrote this to me, and I speak Russian, they wrote to me, you are a people without a land, you have no land or you know you're a landless nation you're you're just you're destined you're cursed they call it, they call this cursed people without a land you're destined to just roam around the earth and be just chased everywhere that this is what they said this is what these tajik and uzbek people said specifically they and, and be, you know and they were they were they were quoting this from the quran my friends this is what islamic society believes and so why are they going crazy now because so now you, you come and tell them, well, we came back to the land and we won all these battles and clearly God let us, you know, uh, come back and we defeated you multiple times. Folks, in their mind, in their mind, because the Jew is a cursed, uh, you know, nation, is a cursed person, without a land, it cannot be, it must not be that Hashem would allow the Jew to come back to reclaim his land. It must be that whatever the Jew is doing today, or whatever this entity called, you know, the Zionist or whatever entity is doing today, whatever these people are doing today, they're doing it against God's will. And somehow they're succeeding, just like, you know, in their heads, in the head of the Muslim, just like evil people succeed all the time, God allows them to, to succeed, but it's not going to be for long. Folks, because if they don't think this way, it will, whatever's happening on the ground, the reality on the ground, right? The fact that the Jews, the God allowed the Jews to take back Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and, the major, and Golan Heights and the majority of Israel will n literally, in the mind of the Muslim, negate the entirety of their theology. Folks, the Jews coming back to the land of Israel is a direct threat to the theology of Islam, which says the Jew is cursed and he's never to come back to Israel. My friends, so how do they deal with this, right? They deal with it by spreading lies and saying, or just in their heads, it's not a lie, saying, you know, these people don't belong here, they're occupiers, they're going against God, God's will, God's will is for them to not come back because they're, you know, they're, they've been nullified, bitu, right? Um, and, so, and so they've created all these frameworks right what's one of the frameworks the framework says that we are the aggressor and they're the you know or like the palestinians this palestinian entity uh they're the victim right and and only and and that proves that that we are in fact uh, you know imposters usurpers and cursed and and and, and we're kicked out and, and god is against us right it, it just proves it you see that these guys are aggressors and, and you have you have these poor palestinians etc etc my friends this is what you are trying to argue against. Not understanding that the people that, you, that you're speaking to do not accept your... Um, it's not even that they don't accept your existence. They don't accept the fact that the land is yours. Because they were told their entire lives by their, by their imams, by their educators, whomever. Most of these people, the, the people that you're talking to, are not literate in their own religion. They haven't learned anything about their own religion. They're just going by what they're told. And what they're told is, the Jew, you know, is a descendant of an ape and a pig. The Jew had, at one point, a covenant with God, right? And the Quran, the Quran does say that, uh, you know, the land was given to the Jew, but the Jew did something wrong, and it's conditional. And that's it. And there's no backseas, there's no, there's no second chances. This is what they are told, my friends. So you can come to them, you know, to high heaven and tell them, look, we came here and we built the land and there was nothing there when you guys were living there. 
and just you know just goes to show that God, you know you can tell them and and you see how many times we were able to win these battle you know you guys attacked us with five armies and you can tell them about the history how we bought the land you can tell them all the history until the cows come home folks but you're talking to you're literally talking you might as well go talk to the kotel because you're talking to a person who has a firmly held belief that you lost your halik your 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 yerusha your inheritance to the land that is who you're talking to folks not only that on top of that and i'll end with this for a muslim for an arab or any muslim really the biggest thing in life the biggest the worst thing in life is what's called busha shame embarrassment folks their chief i don't know trait is pride so it validated their theology when the Jew was living in an Arab country as, and as a, class, as a second class citizen, right? Now that the Jew dares to fight, dares to come back to his land, and now that there are Arabs, two million let's say, or more Arabs living in a Jewish run country, and yes, Everybody knows that these Arabs have equal rights in the Jewish-run country. But it doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if you have all the rights in the world. It doesn't matter to a Muslim if he has all the rights in the world in a Jewish-run country. It's as if, just by virtue of the fact that he lives under a Jew or in a Jewish-run country, it's as if he has no rights. He doesn't care if he has 15 members in the Knesset, 15 Arab members in the 120-person Knesset. He doesn't care if he doesn't get, you know, he, he, can, he can build homes without paying property taxes he doesn't care about this he doesn't care about that you can give him the world but he's living under a jew he's living under the cursed people who they think god according to the quran said they will never get their land back and these jews got their land back and now we have to live under them that is worse than having no rights we don't care what rights you give us and so folks when they say they have no rights in their heads they have no rights we we think they're lying they think that's their perception, that they're, that they're telling the truth, that they have no rights. Why? Because I'm living under a Jew. <laughs> and the Quran says a Jew is cursed, he has no land. So what land am I living in? I'm living in my own land under a Jew that he stole from me. You know, that's, that's, their, that's their thought process. Folks, you're wasting your time. You're wasting your breath. In order to talk to these people, you have to talk to them from a theological perspective and you have to tell them, listen, you have your theology, I got my Torah, and my Torah. Here's what my Torah says. Very simple. This is the this is the simple argument. Forget about don't forget about history, but the history argument doesn't work for them. Simple discussion. Yes, we made mistakes, and because of those mistakes, and you show them the the psukim in the Torah that talk about this this whole situation. That yes, it, God did tell us here in this such and such place that He will you know parsha kitavo that he will do this to us if we don't listen to him yes and he did that but he gave us second chances he uh, our, our prophets came we didn't kill all of them i mean we didn't kill any of them really <laughs> according to you we killed some our prophets came and they said that uh you will come back you will plant vineyards you will build cities and you will drink the wine folks Take a look at what's happening on the ground. Take a look at what's happening on the ground. And God allowed us to do that. So, you can argue with God, or you can accept reality. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll accept what you're saying, maybe they won't. But my, my experience is that uh, pe people in the Middle East, Muslims, when you come to them with something theological as opposed to something uh, you know political and or historical it speaks more to them when a Jew comes you know let's say on Al Jazeera like my friend Professor Mordechai Kedar comes and talks about the Torah in Arabic I can't speak Arabic so he can do it better than I can it speaks more volumes than when he's talking about San Remo or Balfour or you know uh, 
1967 or 1973 or terrorist attacks. Folks, it doesn't mean anything to them. The Jew has to come with nothing but Torah. Nothing but Torah. Because history, while it's correct, it's true. And uh, all kinds of things and all kinds of, you know, Hasbara and all kinds of, yeah, you know, we have a moral army and yeah, you know, this high tech schmite. Folks, no one cares about that. All they want to hear, subconsciously, they don't know they want to hear it. But all, all that will resonate with them is when a Jew comes from, from Torah perspective. Because right now, all of these people, whether they are leftists in, on a campus, whether they are, you know, Russian speaking Tajiki, Tajikistan people, whether they are Arabs in Egypt or wherever else, Lebanon, Syria, the only thing that speaks to them is the word of God, even if they're not, they're not religious. That is the only thing they will understand and, and actually listen to. And you, can, and you can have a debate about that if you know what you're talking about. But if you're coming to them and telling, oh, in 67, you guys attacked us and we did it. Okay, so what? Yeah, we did attack you because you're, you, you took over the land that was ours, that God, you know, that he kicked you out of the land. And if you don't understand why they think that, you're just going to bang your head against the wall. Anyway, guys, so apologies for being a little long-winded about it, but, you know, it's something that I've been observing and I'm, and I'm watching my friends my pros are friends who are doing an amazing job, but you're spinning your wheels. You're spinning your wheels talking to, you know, talking to zombies, talking to ghosts, or people that like, seem like ghosts, and just understand, it's really all about knowing that Hashem, yes, allowed us to come back, and understanding that these people that we're fighting, us coming back negates their entire theology. It's a threat to them. And that's it. Alright guys, talk to you soon.